to be looking at replacing and also testing of an EVO steering wheel sensor. Uh, this is on a 1998 Chevrolet Cheyenne K2500 pickup truck, but it would be uh, similar for any of the 97 or 98 CKs as well as the 99 Tahoes, Suburbans, and Yukons. Uh, basically what you got is a sensor uh, under here on the dash. We're going to go in here and take a look at it, location and we'll talk about how we test it. All right, so if you follow your steering shaft here, there's a, uh, a cage for the bearing sensor. It's an it's assembly that's inside this uh, plastic cage. And this wire that comes up here uh, be wrapped around a foam connector. I like to grab like a, a non-metallic tool to fish this out. There's not a lot of uh, slack here. So you have to be really careful. And then I've, I've already pulled away some of the uh, foam that's been wrapped around here. This is to keep it from rattling uh, as it hits on this metal shaft. There's a green uh, retaining clip that you see here. And you want to use like a, a small pick or something to push this green retaining clip out. And then a small flathead screwdriver will be able to separate the connectors. So let me stop and do that and then we'll come back. Uh, as you can see, I've got the sensor connector cables separated. This was that small green locking clip I was referring to before. Now you push this guy out. It's a safety device. And then you'll be able to use your flathead screwdriver. Separate the tab out. The way you test this sensor is you put an ohm meter across the orange and the blue leads. So if you see inside here, oh, it's not too hard to get a, a couple of probes in there. And uh, you, you put an ohm meter across there. And what you're looking for is while, while you have the probes on here, you need a helper, somebody to go up and turn the steering wheel. Um, it's best to get the front two wheels uh, jacked up off the ground when you do this test. You're just going to turn it left to right. And what you're looking for is on the ohm meter, the, the value should never exceed 12,000 ohms. If you look at the GM service manual, what they say is if this is uh, giving you more than 12,000 ohms, then it's time to replace the sensor. Uh, this particular sensor, the, the situation is it's completely shorted out, so I'm getting, uh, I'm getting an open circuit here. That's another uh, fault you may encounter. When I uh, get the new one up on the bench, I'll show you the, the way you can test this on the old meter. But to remove this, we're going to go ahead and remove this guy because he is bad, uh, defective. Uh, there's a bolt right back here behind the sensor. There's a nut flathead bolt, 15 millimeter. We're going to take this off, and then we're going to push the shaft back so that we can get access uh, to removing the sensor itself from this plastic assembly. So we're going to do that and then we'll come back. Okay, what we've done is we've turned the steering wheel uh, a little bit to make it easier to get at this nut. I've loosened this guy up with a 15 millimeter socket. Take him off here. You just need a socket. He's not going to turn on top. I'm going to push the, the bolt up through the steering coupler. So this is what we got. It's a flathead. He's uh, secured at the base of the neck here. You can see it's squared off, so all you need is a socket to get the nut off. Once this guy's off, we're gonna push the steering column back into the firewall. And then we're gonna be able to get access to the bearing that's sitting inside this right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep moving this guy back and, and finish uh, removing this guy. When we were under the dash, I mentioned uh, I was gonna pull this out on the bench to give a better view of how you test the wheel speed sensor. You can test it while it's in the truck. Uh, certainly that's what you want to do before you yank it all out, but uh, just to give a better view here. Uh, again, what we're looking to do as far as the GM recommended test here is the blue and the orange wire with the black stripe. We're going to be measuring resistance across these two at the end of the connector. And, and what you would normally be looking for is uh, as you turn the, the sensor itself, the assembly here, you want to make sure you never receive a resistance value larger than 12,000 ohms. So I get a couple of probes in here. There's actually little notches that work out just perfect for getting the probes. And again, the, the digital meter is set for ohms or resistance. Now this particular one I mentioned uh, is completely shorted, so it's reading an open right now. But if you wiggle it around a bit, I'm sure we can get something out of it. Maybe, maybe not. but turn this guy around, what you would normally be looking for is seeing him um, move around from maximum of 12,000 
and then he'll dip down to 11, 10, 9, 8, uh, I believe as low as uh, even 1,000 ohms. But uh, this one here is just completely shot, but you get the idea uh, about the test. Uh, a new one should, uh, there we go, I kind of squeezed it there, and you can see we get a little bit of a reading out of it. Uh, obviously, 16,000 and 17,000 ohms is way off the scale of what we want. This particular sensor is the original one from 1998. It should have been replaced ages ago. Um, from what I've seen, they, they typically don't last uh, any longer, and maybe 45, 50,000 miles tops. Uh, this particular truck has 280,000 miles on it, so long overdue. Let's go ahead and install it. Back the under the dash here uh, to put the new guy back on. You know what I ended up doing is since this uh, kit came with a, a new cage piece, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and replace this just since I have it. Uh, we can take a look up here and we can see uh, what it looks like on the other side here with the mirror and then how the piece fits together inside. But to, to remove this cage and, and bearing, uh, you just kind of grab on it and give it a pull. And it will uh, unsnap internally and slide off. Now, you don't have to replace this. Uh, I'm only doing it because I, I happen to have the new one. And I figure this one's been on there since 1998. Got a bearing down, seated in the bottom, so, so why not? Um, it's the same part number and the same style as the one, the kit. So I, I think the reason the kit had one is most likely for 97s. But uh, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now I'm going to get the new one here. And I'm going to position uh, the bearing into it. And then we're going to slide it back onto the shaft here. So let me kind of reposition the camera. All right, we'll so um, we're going to put that new bearing into the plastic cage here. So the way this guy goes... Uh, the, the leads are coming out on this, this piece here, and there's a notch on the top of this piece here. So we're going to mate these guys up together. And uh, since I have, again, since I have the, uh, the cage and bearing, I'm going to put the thing on as an assembly like this. So it snaps in all three places. When we took it out last time, you know, we kind of pushed the, the bearing itself off, but since we got all of them, we can put them on together. And then again, there's a some bearing on the inside here it helps hold the steering column in position. So I'm going to come in a little bit from the top here. Use my finger to not put so much stress on that bearing till we get it slid on all the way. And we're gonna guide the plastic housing piece back into the steering column. Kind of go slow because your whole point you're doing is repairing this, uh, this sensor. I'm actually going to fish the lead through while I'm in here. Get some slack to do it. And then when you hear it snap, you kind of you know kind of give it a test and make sure it's in there. And that's it. We have got it in position. We've got the new cage. We've got the new bearing, and we've got the new sensor. So we've replaced all the parts that come in the kit. Uh, the next step would be to reconnect the, the leads up and reinstall the, the green locking pin and you're all done. All right, so let's take a look under the hood and see uh, why we did all this and what it actually controls. Right. We've uh, got this back on here. Uh, the last thing we need to do is position our, our nut on the, the bolt so that we can tighten it back up. I took a little bit extra time on coming back from the previous video because I noticed that when we pushed this coupler back into the firewall, we had inadvertently uh, moved our firewall seal. You see the seal where I'm running my finger along. It's very important that uh, that stay in position. That's what's keeping you know, water and keeping stuff from coming into the cab. If you accidentally push that through, a pair of long nose pliers, you know, grab, the, grab this guy really far back so you don't tear him and just pull him forward. Uh, the orientation is the little notch here. Uh, it goes on the bottom. The little notch goes on the bottom. All right, we're going to tighten this guy up. And you see I uh, also uh, have uh, reconnected the connection on the harness and reinstalled the green retaining clip. So we're all good to go here. We'll finish torquing this guy down. And then all right, we'll take a look so at we went through this, uh, this diagnosis and replacement of the EVO wheel sensor uh, because of this guy. So you can see attached to the back of the power steering pumps, 
on these trucks. So starting in 1997, uh, there's this electric connection. This harness connects into this, this module here. And what you have in place of just a direct hose connection to the back of the pump is this electronically variable orifice. It's, it's, it, it, uh, based on the um, resistance feedback from the speed sensor that we replaced, the PCM will modify the orifice size that the fluid is going through. And this is why when you're going in a parking lot, you'll get a lot more power assist. And then when you're on the highway, you'll get a lot less. And that's what this whole repair was to restore that proper operation. Uh, in the case of the failed sensor I had, I was getting a over assist in all cases. So it was excessive power steering. But another variation, uh, if you're just getting the um, wrong resistance values as the, as the sensor is beginning to fail, uh, you, you would notice that at highway speed, you'll perhaps get um, positions as you turn the wheel where you have uh, very little power assist and too much power assist, and, and kind of like you're sliding on ice. That's another way to tell these guys are going. All right, that's it. I hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching.